thanks so much for joining me for this holiday stretch break on the tower. You don't have to have a Cadillac if you have a tower with a mat conversion or just a tower. That's great. So we're going to go ahead and begin. I've already sprung my sprung through bar from above because I'm not tall enough for it to make a difference. But if you are tall enough for this to hit you, please go ahead and wait to spring it from above. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press my heels into either post and try to find a position where if I can hold on, that's great, but if I have to hold on my shins, that's fine, where I can find a nice flat back. I want to find a nice line from the tip top of my head out through my tail. This is your time, guys. This is your stretch during the holidays. You need it. You deserve it. Let's find it. Let's squeeze the bottom tips of our shoulder blades. We're going to take a couple nice deep breaths. Do two more. See if you can find an even deeper stretch without rounding. We want as flat of the back as we can find. I'm always worried I'm rounding, so I'm going to check out the mirror. One more breath. Go ahead and release your hands. Place them on your thighs, down on your uh, shins. Don't grab onto your knees. We're going to go ahead and do tiny little cat cows. So just an upper body cat, and then just an upper cat where we look down at our knees. Just finding some mobility in our spine. Finding a nice breath meditation. Let's do one more. And one more. Now, I'm going to take my left hand, bring it onto the outside of my right leg, and rotate back just a little bit. Looking back, you can gently rest your fingertips on the mat. Don't crank yourself into position. Inhale through the center and exhale, placing your right hand on the outside of your left leg and look back. Don't shift in your hips. Don't allow the weight on uh, your feet on the poles to shift either. Inhale and exhale over to the right. And inhale. Exhale over to the left. Try to make the movement come from the belly button above on these last, this last set on each side. So the ribs will rotate across. Everything below the belly button will stay stable. Now, in order to complete our stretches before we begin class, we're going to do some side bending. But to get there, we're going to press the blade of the hand into the outside of the mat or the carriage or the frame or the Cadillac, our left arm will float up to our ear and we'll press into that side while we reach up for where the wall on the ceiling be. I'm pressing my right hand into the frame to engage my lats and underneath my arm, pull my shoulder away from my ear. Use your uh, left obliques to pull up tall. Arms come through a T. My left arm goes to the outside of the frame, presses into the frame, while my right arm or bicep go up to my ear, and I reach for the wall and the ceiling meet on the left side. I inhale through center, and I exhale over to the right, pressing into the frame with my hand, reaching up to where the wall and the ceiling with my left, dropping my shoulder down my back, and inhale through center, exhale to the other side. Again, this is a breath meditation here. It's a nice stretch. It's a nice warm-up. But what we're really looking for is a little bit of a holiday relaxation, right? One more. Good. Come up to sitting up tall. Now, we're going to go ahead and come onto our backs. Bring your bar down with you, holding onto it carefully with one hand. Place your arms wide on the bar. I like them to be on the, I like them to touch the metal on the outside so I can make sure that I get nice flat shoulder blades. The tip top of my head is lined up at the edge of the mat. My feet are bent and on the mat. Now, if you're letting the bar pull your arms up, think of squeezing them under your lats like we just did and wrapping your ribs to pull your shoulder blades down. You control the push through bar. The push through bar does not control you. Now, to begin, we're going to start with some curl ups. So, I have a nice, flat, heavy state room. I've squeezed my legs together because I have lots of support here, right? This is a feel good class, but we're still working. I'm going to inhale. Exhale and curl to the tips of my shoulder blades. I'm not tucking. 
With the support of the push through bar, it's very easy to find a nice flat heavy saver without tucking. And inhale the lower and exhale the lift. And exhale the lower. Let's do one more and then let's add on. So we're going to inhale the lift and exhale the lower. Now control the push through bar, pull your shoulder blades down to the mat. Inhale, exhale, march your right foot up to a tabletop marching position. If you have a mirror, go ahead and take a look in it. Make sure that your thigh is coming directly out of your hip flexor and lower. On the inhale, now exhale to bring your left foot up. If you have a mirror again, go ahead and make sure that that thigh is coming directly out of that hip socket. Inhale and exhale. The hardest part of this whole exercise is maintaining a completely neutral spine because with the push through bar, it's almost easier to feel when your body's shifting than if you're just doing it in mat exercises. The push through bar is very stabilized and I find it to be a very helpful tool to assist uh, in um, various uh, correctional issues with my, with my curl ups and everything else. So now we're gonna combo the marching and the curl. So we're gonna curl up and march our right leg up to tabletop, but maintaining a completely stable saver. I'm drawing our ribs to our hips. We're gonna lower the inhale and exhale our left leg up. And inhale to lower. And exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. Okay, one more like this, and then we're going to add on from here. If at any time you'd like to go back to the previous exercise, please feel free. Inhale to lift. And exhale to lower. Now inhale to march it up. Now extend it out to working level. Now pull it back in. Replace your foot on the mat and release your curl up. Now curl up, pull up to tabletop. Marching. Extend your leg out to working level, pull your leg back to tabletop, place it back on the, on the carriage or the mat, and go ahead and release your curl. We have two more on each side just like that. So curl up, march, extend, pull, release. Curl up, march, extend, pull, release. One more, curl up, march, extend, pull, release. Curl up, march, extend, pull, Release, leave your leg in tabletop though. March your right leg up to meet it. And we have three curl ups just in tabletop. Inhale, exhale to curl up, and inhale back down. And exhale to curl up, and inhale back down. One more. Now, let's inhale to curl up as we extend our legs to working level. Turn it out to Pilates V. Turn it back to parallel. Draw it into tabletop, rest our head, neck, and shoulders, and curl up, extend, turn out to Pilates feet, and parallel, and tabletop, and lower. Curl up, extend, and V, and parallel, and pull, and lower. Let's do three more. Pull, and lower. Make sure your sacrum's heavy the whole time here, guys, okay? And this is our final one. And extend. And lower. Now, staying here in tabletop, I'm going to reach my left thigh away from me, but not shift my hips in any way. I'm pulling my shoulder blades down on the mat. I'm going real slow. How far can you go without arching your back off the mat? And pull it back up. And now the right leg will toe dip. You're pressing your thigh away from you and maintaining the degree of bend behind your knee. So you're not going like this to do it. That's cheating, right? But we're pressing our thigh away from us, challenging our bodies. Let's do one more on each side, and then you guessed it, we're going to go ahead and add on. And one more. And now we're going to curl up as we toe dip our left foot. We're going to pull it back up and in and lower. And we're going to curl up and toe dip our right leg and pull it back up and in and lower. And curl it up and toe dip. We're not doing it all at the same time necessarily. We're going to curl up and then toe dip because we don't want our back to go wonky. We don't want to arch our back off the mat. 
one more. And just hold it. And lower. Now extend your legs up towards the ceiling. We're going to do scissors here. We're going to do eight total on each side. The first four are going to be their head and shoulders down, and the last four are going to be in curl up. So, leaving our right leg up, we're going to lower and lift our left leg, and lower and lift our right leg. Don't allow the back to arch off the mat or the hips to shift. Really pull down on that bar. This is a lot harder than it maybe should be, right? Really draw the ribs together. And now, curl up. And now we have four more. Lower and lift. Pull the bar apart with your hands to really open up the front of the body. Here's three. And four. Now, lower the head, neck, and shoulders. Leave the legs up at the top. We're gonna separate the feet the width of the reformer mat, or the Cadillac mat, or the mat uh, for the um, tower. We're going to lower down working level, squeeze them together, and lift them back up through the center. And open, and lower, and squeeze, and lift. This is a variation on the circle, also a variation on the double leg lower lift. And now lift. Now we're going to lower through the center, open the width of the, of the uh, mat, Lift and squeeze together. We have three more. Lower and open and lift and squeeze. Really pull your shoulder blades down for these last two. Maintaining the stability in the neutral spine and the front of the body is very hard here with working the load of the legs. Now, we're going to curl up. Release your bar now. Don't just let your bar go fully. We're going to come back to lying down. With the tip top of our head at the top of the uh, mat, we're going to squeeze in on the bars with our arms in a 90 degree position. I'm not holding on for dear life, I'm pressing in and down. I'm going to draw my knees into my chest, draw my heels into my glutes. We're going to do reverse ab curl. So make sure that you're not past the edge of your mat. We're going to inhale, exhale, and our spine and try to peel our tail off a little bit and lower and release to neutral. It's easier holding on to something to do something or to do an exercise like this, whereas opposed to if you're doing it on the mat, it's very hard to curl up very high, right? But with the assistance of the bars, you can curl up even higher. Don't hold on with your fingers. I challenge you to just press in with the, with the palm of your hand. Imprint and peel and release and neutral. Imprint your spine, peel your tail off, release and neutral. Don't allow your shoulders to pop off either. Keep them nice and flat and wide. Here's six, we're going to eight. Here's seven. And here's eight. Good. Now, release your arms, go onto your side. Watch out for your push through bar. Right, watch out for that. We're going to come up to sitting up tall. We're going to be doing some kneeling work. If you need a knee pad, please get one. We're going to come up to sitting up tall with our shoulders over our hips, our hips over our knees. I'm squeezing my glutes. I'm going to reach out in front of me. I'm going to wrap my thumb and my fingers around my bar. And then I'm just going to press it down. Using my underarms. Drawing my ribs together. And release it back up just a little bit, not all the way and press it down. We don't want to release the muscle. And up and down. Really make sure that you're in a nice neutral spine, which is what I was just checking. You want your shoulder blades nice and wide. So again, I have my hand separated the entire bar with my the out, outer pinky aspects of my hands touching the outside of the bar. Now, we're going to add on the cat here. There's not really a cow here. Mostly just cat. So we're going to press our arms down. Don't squish your booty back. Squeeze your glutes and begin to articulate your head down. Press it forward. Don't go past the bar and come back. In and raise the bar up. Now don't squish your booty back. Don't pop up into your shoulders. 
don't hop out and do a back an arch, which you can do, but we're not doing it in this class. And make sure your thigh, your uh, shins stay connected. So we're going to lower down with our underarms, begin to articulate down as if we're peeling off the wall. Maintain that curve in our spine if we press forward. If you have a bar, don't press your springs into the bar and come back up. So don't press your springs past the upright pose. And now press down. Draw your abs up and in. Draw your ribs towards your hips. Don't squeeze your booty back behind your knee. And down, maintaining that, that nice curve in your back. Pull it up. And lift. Let's do three more. And squeeze your glutes forward. And begin to lower. Ooh, this is a really hard position. Draw your shoulders down your back. It takes a lot of control. I can't remember if we have one or two more, but I'm enjoying this, so we're going to do two more. <laughs> Don't lose control of your bar. Make sure that your fingers are wrapped around it so that if you lose your bar, you don't lose a two. This is going to be our final one. Squeeze your glutes and pull it up and don't stick your booty up. And lower, okay, now, we're gonna hold onto our bar with one hand. We're gonna come sitting onto one hip. We're going to come onto our stomach. We're going to wrap our fingers around the bar the whole time so we don't lose the bar and knock ourselves in the face or head. I'm going to slide myself back and I'm going to extend my arms. When I extend my arms, I'm going to make sure I'm not pressing the string through, right? I'm going to come onto my forehead. I'm going to press the bar up in front of me. I'm going to squeeze my inner thighs together, draw my abdominals up and in and wrap my ribs. From there, I'm going to shrug my shoulders. So I'm going to bring my shoulder up by my ears and then slide my shoulder blades down my back. And then shrug my shoulders and slide. Even though we don't like bringing our shoulders up towards our ears, it is a very important movement. We don't want to get frozen, right? One more. Now, leaving our shoulders down our back, we're going to wrap our fingers and thumbs around the bar. We're going to press down onto the bar with our pinky blade edge more than our pointer finger. And we're going to begin to lift our head, pulling the bar in just a little bit for a nice swan. And then I'm going to articulate back down on the front of my body. And I'm going to inhale, lift my head first, and then begin to peel off the mat, pulling down under my arms, which is why we just do all those shrug and slides. Let's do one more. And lower back down. Now, leave your arms here and float your right leg up by squeezing your glutes inner thighs and hamstrings and lower. And now your left leg. And lower. And right leg. And lower. And left leg. And lower. Right leg stay up. Left leg stay up. Hover your face off the mat so that your biceps are by your ears and begin swimming just your legs. We're going to inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. If you do not like this position with your arms on the push through bar, you can do it without the push through bar. More inner thigh, squeeze more inner thigh, more hamstring, more belly button to spine. Pull your ribs together even tighter. Pull your arms down your back. One more. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Now, release everything. Take one hand down to the carriage and begin to pull yourself up. Don't release the bar until the spring tension is at zero. Okay. We're going to go into spine stretch and saw, which are two of my favorite exercises on the tower. We're going to find the foot position again where our heels are pressing in to the bar. We're gonna sit up nice and tall, just like we tried to stretch out for. We we're holding on, trying to do a flat back stretch at the beginning of class. I'm going to place my hands on the push to bar nice and wide, so my outer hands are pressing into the outer sides of the bar. I'm gonna raise the bar up. I'm gonna flat back, hinge forward, just like at the beginning of class, but with my biceps up by my ears now. So I'm gonna to to draw my ribs together, squeeze down my shoulder blades. 
From there, I'm going to tuck my tail, pull back, and a lat press down. Then I'm going to draw my ribs towards my hips and round my body forward like a spine stretch over my legs. Don't press up so far that your, your uh, spring hits, right? Now pull back in that uh, round back position. We're going to flat back hinge up as you lift your arms and bring your biceps by your ears. Now begin to tuck your tail, roll back, lat press down, and round forward over your legs, looking at your knees. If you can round forward further than your bar will allow you to with straight arms, I bend my arms slightly. And then I straighten them as soon as I can. I'm in a round back position. I flat back hinge back, and I sit up nice and tall. Flat back hinging forward, a nice line from my fingertips, through my head, down through my tailbone. One more. Try to leave a uh, nice straight wrist. Don't break them. Now, pull back. See shape curve? Sit up tall and press forward. From here, we're not going to release the press. We're going to begin soft. We're going to begin to pull back in a C-shaped curve or a tuck tail, releasing our right arm, circling it around, following our hand, looking towards the back. And then we're going to bring it up by our ear and side bend. After we've side bent, we're going to pull down, pressing down with our lats, drawing that left rib towards the left hip, rounding over, bringing our arm over the push through bar arm and sawing off our baby toe. From there, we're going to pull back in a C-shaped curve, reaching our arm around, doing a giant circle with our arm, coming into a flat back, and rotating the saw off our toe by reaching underneath our arm on the push through bar. Again, our bicep is by our ear. Now I'm going to pull back for a giant arm circle. At some point, I'm going to find my tuck. I'm going to draw my rib toward my hip on my left side, saw off my baby toe. I'm trying not to lift at either side of my sits bones. I'm going to rotate around. Nice wide circle. Begin to flat back as I pull up and saw off my baby toe. I'm still in a flat back as I reach back. When my arm reaches behind me, I tuck my tail and then I round forward over my leg, saw off my baby toe, arm over top of the push through bar arm. And then I round my arm again in a round back position and I press up to a flat back position, saw off my baby toe. And I come back around for kind of like a halfsy circle, mostly up to a T, place my hand on the bar, press it up for a flat back hinge forward, and I begin with my left arm. So I tuck my tail, I roll back. I circle my left arm, I follow with my gaze. I side bend, I press down with my lats and my uh, obliques, drawing my rib to my hip on my right side. I saw off the baby toe. My biceps are by my ears as I press forward. Now I begin to tuck my tail and roll back. And then I begin to flat back hinge up as the bar comes up and I saw off my baby toe. Are any of these cues working for anyone? <laughs> now I'm going to round my arm again, following with my gaze. I tuck my tail, draw my tip of my rib towards the tip of my hip on the right side, saw off my baby toe on my right foot. I'm going to pull back. These are very difficult, right? I'm going to begin to flat back hinge up, bring my bicep by my ear as I reach forward and soft my baby to bring my arm underneath. One more. Circle your arm, look back. Side bend and dive down. We did rotation, we did side bend, and we did flat back all at the beginning of class and articulation. Come back through, bring your arm to a T, place it on the bar, press it forward. Go ahead and release the bar. Carefully, hold on to your bar, hold on to your hook. Release the push through bar. We're gonna press back, feet flat, reach our hands forward, tuck our tail, roll back. We're going to be doing the hundreds, march one foot up to tabletop, other foot up to tabletop. Reach up to the ceiling, out of your sternum at 12th rib. Inhale, exhale, and curl up. Extend your legs to your working level and begin pumping. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Squeeze your glutes. Squeeze your inner thighs. 
Make sure you have that nice flat sacrum that we worked on in the beginning of class. Draw the tips of your ribs to the tips of your hips. Reach your fingertips long as if you're trying to reach the, um, the end of the mat. Now, begin, uh, think of having an egg or an apple or an orange on your chin. Don't crush it and don't let it roll away. Now drop your feet an inch. Now drop your feet an inch. Drop your feet an inch. Now final one. Stop there. Pull your knees into your chest. Rest your head and shoulders. Rock gently from side to side, but if you're on an elevated mat, please don't fall off. <laughs> All right. Come to the side. I have my bar where I like it for all of my exercises, but if you need to adjust your bar or the height at any time through class, please feel free to do so. We're going to begin with um, some bridge work, and then we're going to begin with, uh, we're going to go into some roll downs, a banana stretch, chest expansion, and thigh stretch, all with the roll down bar. So go ahead and pick your position for your bar right now, because after that we're going to have a leg, side leg, leg series and a prone leg series. Supine, a supine leg series. Sometimes I get this confused, sorry. And then we're going to go with the push through bars from, from above, and that'll be class. So I'm going to go ahead and find the bar with one hand holding on to it as I lie down on my back. I'm going to wrap my fingers around the bar on the outer edges. I'm going to squeeze my legs together for this bridge work because I'm already warmed up, right? From there, I'm going to pull the bar down to my thighs and release it back up in neutral spine. Squeeze under your arms and pull it down as far as you can and release. We have six, we have four more. Here's three. Here's four. Six is our magic number over here. Here's five. And here's six. Now, don't allow your hands to go like this. You want to keep it over your sternum and 12 right here. Inhale, exhale, and create your spine. Take your tail, articulate up to a bridge. And now place your spine back down. Think of trying to put your tailbone on your heels. Again, here's two. Three. Adjust yourself as needed. I just slipped. Four. Try not to flare your ribs. I've been having the habit lately of flaring my ribs when I bridge up, and I'm trying to break myself of that. So make sure you're not flaring your ribs up there. You'll feel it in your back. Here's six. Now we're gonna do six more, but we're gonna add the arm pull and the bridge. So as we bridge, we're gonna pull our hands down, our bar down to our hips, and articulate back down for six. And bridge and pull for five. Four. This is Katie Rowley, my trainer. One of her favorites on the uh, tower. Two more. One more. Now hold on with one hand as you roll to the side and press yourself up to sitting. Again, you don't want to whack your fit self in the face with the bar. We do a lot of lat work over here, a lot of pulling our shoulders away from our ears. A lot of widening the collarbone, which I feel is so important during the holiday season because we do so much hunching over and trying to do stuff. We really need to open up across the front of the body. So, again, I'm going to come up to sitting up tall. My favorite position, our heels, and our heels are on the uprights. I wrap my fingers around the bar. It's up here. That's cool. But I'm going to pull it down with my lats and release. Pull it down as far as you can without feeling it go into your legs. Because eventually your legs want to help you take over. Here's four. Again, six is our magic number. Here's five. Really wrap your ribs here. And six. Stay there. Now keeping the bar here, this is a, a magic position. We're going to tuck our tail and articulate down, allowing the bar to help us increase our articulation in control. Drop your shoulders down your back. Squeeze under your arms. Don't allow it to go like this. Now, begin to peel your spine off head first. And come up to sit up tall. Don't let the bar go up. Tuck your tail. Roll back very slow. Ooh. Articulate up. I like to inhale to begin on the way down. After my sacrum hits, I exhale. 
exhale. Just like a, the, this is my, my uh, same breath count as in roll up. I'm going to inhale on the way up, and when my sacrum goes off, I'm going to exhale. Inhale. <sighs> exhale. Inhale. <sighs> One more. Keep that bar down. I know it's hard. <sighs> now, while we're down here, we're going to pull the bar into the sternum twelve group for six, five, four. Grab those ribs. Three, two, one. Peel up the tips of your shoulder blades and pull for six, five, four, three, two, one. Peel up to your 12th rib. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Peel up to a C-shaped curve where your sacrum's flat. So it's real deep, but you have, you have assistance from the roll down bar. For six, five, four, three, two, one. Articulate up. Leave the bar where it's supposed to be, right in front of your sternum shoulder. And release. Oh, run over your legs for just a second. We're going to do banana stretch. I failed to mention this at the beginning of class. I took down all of my um, feet and, and hand springs for this next exercise. You can leave them up. I usually leave them up, but I felt like they maybe were a little ugly for the class. So um, I'm going to come in and I'm going to bend my knees because when you press up for the banana stretch, you want to strongly stand in to the pose. Now, I know for myself personally, that means that I need to bend my knees pretty strongly. So, I'm going to place my right hand in the middle of the bar. I'm going to float my left hand underneath. I'm going to gently engage underneath my arm by pulling down on the bar, not with my, well, with my shoulder and trap, but with my underarm down my ribs. Now, I'm going to tuck my tail, press my heels in as soon as I can, and roll back. If you need to adjust so your heels are pressing in more, please do so. You should feel very firm. Pull that left, that right shoulder down. Bring the left arm to a T. Bring the bicep up to your ear. And now side bend to the side of the, of the mat. If you can, flip your palm to hold on to the outside. Otherwise, if you can, reach for the strap. Or if you have neither of those things, please just reach up. Pull the left side down. Don't allow it to flare. Let's take one more breath. And now we're going to squeeze in with our inner thigh. Your thighs might not touch each other, but don't let your left side peel off. So take your left foot and squeeze that left leg into your right leg and release it back out. And squeeze it back in and release it back out. One more. If you have, if your thighs are touching, take your leg and Cross your ankles over each other. So your left ankle's on top of your right ankle to increase the stretch. If not, keep squeezing your inner thighs towards each other. Now release that foot, thigh to thigh. Bring it back to the post. Bring your body back to the neutral position. Bring your left arm to a T. Float it under the bar. Articulate back up to sitting up tall. Release that. I know my forearm's tired from that, right? All right, I'm going to scooch in a little bit closer because I was a little bit far last time. I'm going to place my left hand in the middle of the bar, float my right hand underneath, engage by pulling down with my left lat on the bar. I'm going to tuck my tail and articulate down, pressing my heels into the uprights as soon as I can. I'm going to bring my arm out to a T, bring my arm overhead, and then I'm going to side bend. I'm going to reach for the outside of the mat. I'm going to reach for the... Uh, strap, I'm going to reach for whatever, or I'm going to reach for nothing and just try to hold it. I'm going to bring my right side down. From there, I'm going to take a couple breaths. Now, I'm going to take my right leg and use my inner thighs to squeeze my right leg and my left leg without lifting up my right side and release. And I'm going to squeeze. And I'm going to release. Now one more, hold it there, and if your thighs are touching, bend your right leg and cross the ankles. Don't allow your right foot to sickle or bend. Keep it as straight as possible. If you can't achieve this, go ahead and continue to squeeze your inner thighs together. Release the cross, thigh to thigh, 
And now open your leg, place it back on the upright, bring your body up to a center position, arm out to a T, float your hand under the bar, and begin to articulate out. Release the bar. From here, we're going to go into chest expansion and thigh stretch, and then we're going to go into sideline legs. I'm going to come to kneeling. I've scooted away a little bit. I have two yellow springs on my on my pull down on my um on my pull down bar, so my, my weight's a little lighter, which is why it's up higher and you know everything else. But you need to adjust it to where you need it to be for the weight and for your body and everything else. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come to a kneeling position. Again, if you need a knee pad, please get one. We're gonna have our shoulders over our hips, our hips over our knees. We're gonna hold on to the bar. Our, our uh, shins are pressing into the carriage. We're gonna pull the bar down and release it. Nice flat shoulder blades, squeezing under our arms again. And then we're gonna pull down. Now we're gonna add the head if we'd like. We're gonna pull down. We're gonna move to the left, center, right, center, and release. Now we're gonna pull the bar down. Other way, right, center, left, center, release. We have two more, one in each direction. Oh, sorry. Pull the bar down. Look left. Center. Right. Center. Release. One more. Pull the bar down. Look right. Center. Left. Center. Release. Back up just a little bit. We're going to do thigh stretch. So press the bar down gently so it's in front of your sternum 12th rib. And now hinge, flat back, hinge back. Feeling a nice thigh stretch. The thigh stretch on the tower is my favorite. Float it back up, squeezing your glutes because they can really find the thigh stretch here. Let's see, inhale. And exhale. One more, and then we can add on if you so choose. But if you have neck or back problems, please continue with this exercise. We're going to go back, uh, we're going to go back and thigh stretch. When you go back to your position, back bend. Oh, I hit my face on the person bar. Come back and then come back up. So we go back in our thigh stretch position. We do a chest lift as opposed to a back bend, just a little chest lift from the sternum. We come back to our thigh stretch and then we come back up. So we're going to pull back into our thigh stretch, little chest lift, back to our thigh stretch, and up, one more, thigh stretch, chest lift, thigh stretch, and back up. Good guys, we're going to go and put the push to our way. We're going to go ahead and grab our feet straps. I only need one, I only need one um, foot spring because I peg mine in the center. I like to peg mine in the center. I like to go to the side. And then I immediately turn over onto my back to do the same leg on my back. So uh, if, you have, if you don't have the center option though, and you have them from side to side, you're going to spring from the side in front of your body for the sideline. And then when you go to your back, you'll change your foot spring to the one that's closest to your, so we'll start here, we'll do this leg on this spring, and if we go to our back, we go to that spring. So you need both your foot straps then. I use a Y strap, it's not necessary, I just have it alive yet. So, to set ourselves up in the correct position for sideline legs on the, the carriage. If you've never done them, you'll want to lower your bar. Uh, I have uh, three, three spots to put my bar. I have my foot straps on the top spot, but if you've never done them, put them on the first dot or the first available dot, especially if you have a balanced body machine. We're going to place our foot in the strap to begin. I'm going to line up my body with the back of the mat and place my hand on the peg and extend my leg long. I'm going to lift up out of my side closest to the mat, and I'm going to shoot energy out of my top leg. I'm going to flex both feet, draw my abs up and in, wrap my ribs, 
nice long neck. I like to have my hand on my hip, but I drop my elbow back so that the uh, spring doesn't rub. When we do front, we're not going to go back. We're going to go front to original position. That way it doesn't pull on our low back. So we'll, we'll pull it front, flex our foot, and pull it back to the original position. And front. Shoot energy out of your foot the whole time. When you come forward, it's shooting out of your toes. When you flex your foot, your energy is shooting out of your heels. And point and flex. Increase at the hip flexor and extend. Increase and extend. Three more. Good. It's nice to feel the stretch in the legs as opposed to um, side the legs on the mat. Now turn your legs out to Pilates feet, stack them on top of each other, squeeze your glutes, float your foot up and flex to lower it. And point to lift and flex to lower. And point to lift, flex to lower. Make sure that your ribs are pulled together, that you're not sinking back in your low back or swaying backwards. Good. And lift and lower. Here's nine. And here's ten. Point your foot, leave it up at hip height. Now coming from where the glute and the thigh meet, do ten small circles in each direction. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and reverse. Shoot energy out of your toes so you can really locate that glute muscle here. Nine, ten. Bend your foot into a side frog. Come on in. If you need to release your foot from that spring, find the other spring. If you don't, come on your back. So the furthest back you'll be is head to the end, end of the carriage, but if you need a little bit more, you can come out a little bit further. Extend your leg out long. We're in a frog. We're going to press out, pressing through our heel, and pull it back in. And here's two. And three. Now, with your foot supported in this strap, see how far you can lower it without arching in your back. Seven, eight, here's nine, and here's ten. Now draw your foot in, extend it up. Now this is zero spring tension, but we don't want to be there. We always want a little bit of spring tension, so extend your foot away from you a little bit and flex to lower and point to lift. And flex to lower and point to lift. Don't allow any shifting to happen in your neutral spine. Here's five. Here's six. And seven. And eight. Here's nine. I'm not allowing it to go to zero at any time, remember? Keep it up, don't know zero. Now, bring it across your body, down and around and up. Don't zero it out. Across, down and around and up. Don't zero it out. Three. And don't shift in your hips. Four. We're going to ten. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. I find sideline legs in springs to be the most enjoyable of all sideline legs. And then we're going to reverse. Away, down, around, up for 10. Nine. I like, the, I like the, the feel of having to press through the springs. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine and ten. Now press your leg away from you. Take your right leg, place it on top, below the kneecap, above the ankle, so that you're not pressing in to uh, any weird uh, joints or kneecaps. Right? We want it bone to bone, and allow the spring to pull your leg back, so you're in a nice figure four. Make sure that your sacrum is very heavy and that you're not shifting in your body weight at all. So you can really increase the stretch. 
We're going to take a couple nice deep breaths here. Relax into the stretch. Also, flex your foot of the leg that's crossed on the top. For me, that's my right leg. And then it'll increase the stretch as well. Press your left leg away. Release your right foot. Pull your left leg out. There's really no graceful way to get into foot springs from what I understand. So I like to put my right foot in and now I'm going to wiggle. I'm going to wiggle to my right side. I'm going to place my left hand up on the upright bar. I'm going to press my left leg out, shooting energy out of it, lifting up out of my side closest to the mat. I'm going to flex both feet, press my right foot out, 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 out of the spring, and then I'm going to point to flex it. Bring it forward, creasing at the hip flexor, and squeeze it back until it's in the starting position because I don't want to compromise my low back, right? My abs are up and in. My ribs are wrapped. I'm pulling up out of the side closest to the mat. It's a lot easier to find this position when you're pressing your weight through, when you're pressing energy through the heel or the foot because then it's going to naturally lift your side. Here's nine. One more. Now, stack your legs, turn it out to a Pilates V. Squeeze your glutes, don't roll back onto your low back. Float it up, don't sink down into your side, and flex to lower. And here's two. Squeeze both your glutes, really rotate the femur in the hip socket so that you're really rotating the foot the whole time. Draw your abs up and in, wrap your ribs. Here's nine. And here's ten. Stop on your foot's hip height, point your foot, press energy out of your toes, come from where the glutes of the thigh meet, and move from there for ten small circles in each direction. Go ahead and reverse. Now, go ahead and bend your knee into a turned up frog. Find the position on your back. Change your foot spring if you need to. This is zero tension. Press some tension into it. Don't allow it to go to zero tension at any time during these exercises. Press it down to a frog. How low can you go? Don't rock off your back hip, though. Here's three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pull it in. Don't forget when you lift it up, don't lose that tension and flex to lower and point to lift. Ten and nine. As far down as you can go without losing your neutral spine. When your back starts to arch, You've gone too far. Here's five. Flex the lower point to lift. Press in through the back leg of your standing leg too, so you're still activating that as well. Find a nice breath pattern. And go ahead and come back up. Keep it. Keep it under tension and across the body, down, around, and up. Ten. Nine. Find a nice breath pattern here. This is your time. Wrap your ribs together. Make sure you have a flat sacrum. Up at the top and reverse away and down and around. Keep it under tension, don't lose the tension. Lower the foot away from you. Take your left leg, place it across the thigh 
with the ankle off as well so that you're not sickling any um, joints and you're not on any kneecaps and then pull that leg in and let the spring pull you into a figure four position. Don't allow your hips to shift. We want a neutral spine here. Even if you have to press the springs out to find that stretch, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the really deep hip flexor stretch right now. more deep breath here and then we're going to spring it from above. Press that right foot away, release the left leg, pull the right foot into frog, release the strap, roll your side, come up to sitting. It's time to prepare our uh, tower for the push through bar from above. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my safety strap and I'm going to make sure it's connected. I'm going to find my spring, and I've done this many times, so I can tell you, don't hold on to the spring connection. If you hold on to the spring, that's one thing, but don't hold on to the spring connection. I mean, like, if you want to get pinched, that's fine. But um, I've gouged my hand many times on that connection. So, I'm going to come down. This is the super fun, stretchy part. I'm going to place the tip top of my head at the edge of my... Uh, Matt, I'm going to find my 90 degree bend on my arms, but before I do that, I'm going to press the bar slightly. And I'm going to find a parallel position with my feet where they're underneath my sits bones, and then I'm going to bend my knees. If my knees got to the side, I can come in much further, but I want to really try to stretch out here. So I know that it's, it's a lot less um, flashy and showy. It's fine. Go ahead and find that 90 degree position and press it up. This is the flashy, showy part right here. The bar's pushing your toes down, so you're getting a full back of the hamstring. Ooh, nice stretch. Now bend. Keep your knees parallel and nice and relative, and straighten it straight up, letting your toes drop below your heels. And then bend. And now straighten it straight up. Now I'm gripping on to my toes like a little bird on a perch. Now from here I'm going to straighten my feet up and point my ankles and then flex them down, way down and point it up and release the stretch and I'll really get into it. And one more. Now bend your knees in halfway. Release your left leg. Now bring it down, the bar down as far as you can, but keep your leg parallel and don't allow your hips to shift. And now straighten your leg and bend it. This is another series that I got from uh, my trainer, Katie Rally. She really likes this one too, and I, I have to agree, it's a really great stretch. And I'm going to point and flex my foot three times again, just like I did before. The stretch will be increased because I'm not splitting the weight between two, two legs. It's one leg, right? But I'm stretching out the hip flips from this leg. Now point your foot up. Now, carefully float your foot up without momentum and lower it down and lift. If you can tap it, that's great. One more. Now flex your foot, bend it in halfway. Bring the left foot up. Extend your right foot long and not the, let the left leg come in. Make sure that it's still in parallel and you haven't done anything weird like hiking your hips. Now press it up, press the toes below the heel and bend and press it and bend. Now press it one more. Now point the ankle and flex the ankle and point the ankle and flex the ankle. Find that stretch even deeper. One more. And now point. And now lower and lift the foot with control. I'm tapping in between the bar and the mat, but if you can't, that's no problem, right? Flex the foot and bring it in halfway. Let your hands help you up the bar. Now bring both feet up. Find a flat sacrum and find a um, a, uh, oh my gosh, Pilates deep position. Don't allow your knees to go wider than your toes. Make sure that your knees are tracking over your toes. Now press it up. Press your heels up higher than your toes. So you're still getting that stretch. And bend it in. And press it up. And bend it in. And one more. And now point. You might have to adjust your your Pilates V here so it's wider than you can with the pointing and flexing of your feet. And one more. 
Now bend your legs in halfway, extend your left leg, bring that right leg uh, into an even deeper bend and press it up through the heel and bend. And press it up through the heel and bend. And one more, and now point and flex your foot. One and two and three and straighten it. And now float your foot up with control and lower, no momentum. Two and three. Flex your foot, bend it in halfway. Bring your left foot up, extend your right foot. Don't do anything wonky with your hips and bend that leg in all the way. And now press it up through the heel. Oh, this leg is so tight. And here's two. And here's three. And now point, flex your foot. One and two and three. And point your foot and lower and lift for one and two. And three. Now, bend your feet in. Replace the right foot. Come into a deep frog. Find a 90 degree bend with your hands. I know I lost it, it was very bad of me. We're gonna do spine stretch from here. If you have any neck or back problems, please don't do this. We're going to press our legs straight, tuck our tail, press in through the bar to articulate up. We're standing into the bar in a shoulder stand. From there, I'm going to frog my legs in a high frog. And then I'm going to articulate down to the mat, slowly and with control. I'm going to press my legs up and articulate up. Bend at the knees into a high frog and articulate down. I'm going to relax my ankles. So let's talk about our ankles now. We can really do some fun stuff. My ankles are relaxed, relaxed, relaxed until I have to press them really nice and long. My ankles are pointed. I come into a high frog. I tuck my tail. I articulate down. And as the bar comes down, I relax my ankles. My ankles are relaxed, but as I press the bar up, I straighten them out, and then I bend it in. And as I come down, I relax the ankles. Let's do one more, just a little bit extra in case you're looking for something with a little bit more ankle articulation. Good. We're going to go ahead and take the bar and remove it. So from here, we're going to go ahead and do can-can and teaser. Okay, it's going to be a lot heavier here, so if you choose not to do it on here, and if you'd like to do it uh, on the mat, you're more than welcome to. But we're going to do can-can and teaser, and then just a stretch. So on the mat is your choice. Our head's up at the tip top. Our arms are wide on the bar. Our knees are at tabletop. For can-can, I'm going to curl it up and extend my legs over to the right first. I'm going to draw them back down to tabletop as I articulate down. We're doing three on each side. So I articulate up, rock over my left hip, extend my legs to the left, and I come back down into tabletop as I articulate down. And I'm up, extend to the right, and articulate down. And articulate down. Let's do one more on each side. Rest your feet for a moment. You can begin teaser here or here with your feet flat or your feet in tabletop, or you can begin with your feet extended long on the mat, which is what I'm going to do. We're going to do a classic teaser. We're going to lift in a teaser and do three arm bends. We're going to lift in a teaser and do three leg lower lifts. We're going to lift in a teaser and do three leg circles in each direction, double leg circles. And then we're going to stretch and be all done, okay? So, hands nice and wide, shoulder blades nice and flat. It's really easy to find, uh, to find the position where you're supposed to lower and lift your legs with the bar's assistance. So, let's go ahead and peel our spine off. And then, once we begin to pull up our sacrum, we begin to float it up. Find a nice wide back. Allow the bar to press your shoulder blades down your back to keep your, to keep your ears out of your biceps. Now, tuck your tail and roll down. Your eyes should follow your toes, and your toes and your heels and head should hit at the same time. Inhale, exhale, and up. Toes follow your eyes, and lower and lift your arms three times. One, two, three. Tuck your tail. Eyes and toes track. It's time for the leg lower left. And lower your legs an inch, and lift them. Nothing should be happening in your body. Now tuck your tail, roll it back down. 
Final one, three legs, three double leg circles in each direction. So we'll go one way three and then the other way three. And lift. And now open one. And a two. And a three. If you feel it in your hand in your quad, go ahead and bend your legs slightly. Tuck your tail and roll it down. Oh. We'll go ahead and take a nice cleansing breath here. Ooh. Now don't hit your face on the bush through bar. Press yourself away and come up to sitting up tall. From there, my push through bar is a little too low for me to do the final stretches, which are just the stretches that we did at the beginning of class. But I'm going to go ahead and remove my spring first. And then I'm going to remove my safety strap. So nothing knocks me in the face. Same stretch as we did at the beginning of class. We'll probably feel a little different. I'm going to press my heel into the push through bar. And I'm going to find my flat back stretch, hopefully holding on to the bar if I wasn't able to before. We're going to take a couple nice deep breaths here, and then we're going to do some seated cat cow rotations and side bends. Go ahead and release the bar. Hands on top of your thighs, to your so the side of your thighs, or on your calf if you're feeling flexy enough. We're going to lift our, our upper sternum up into a chest lift, into a chest lower lift. Body. It's not really a full cat cow, it's more of just a sternum cat cow. Upper body. One more. Sit up nice and tall. Bring your left hand to the outside of your right leg and rotate to look back behind you on the right side. And my rotation is much, much, much more. I much increased rotation now. And I'm not even pulling. Other side. Sit up nice and tall through the center. One more to each side, and then we'll do the side bends, okay? Now, arms to a T. Bring your right hand to the outside, press into it. As your left arm comes up by your, your bicep, by your ear, and you reach for the wall in the ceiling knee. Press into the frame with that hand. Come up to a T, and go the other way. Press into the frame with your left hand as you reach up for the wall in the ceiling with your right hand. And to the left. Don't allow your weight to shift on your sits bones. One more to each side. Come back to a T. Come back to, I'm going to switch my, I wanted to go to that position, so I want to switch my flip of my legs. Let's find an easy seated position. It was a great class, guys. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and end by taking a nice big inhale up, nice stretchy inhale, and exhale it back down and give it a shake. Great holiday stretch class. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions or need any modifications, please feel free to reach out to me. Happy holidays.